Hello beautiful people and welcome to another tutorial. Today's tutorial is part of the Internet of Things series and in this tutorial I'm going to be looking at how to send data from ESP8266 which is Node MCU to IBM Cloud Platform. I'm going to be using a service offered by IBM called the Watson IoT Platform and I'm going to be using it to receive data from my ESP8266 board. In the last tutorial I looked at how to send data from Raspberry Pi to IBM Cloud and in this tutorial we're going to be considering how to do the same using ESP8266. If you are yet to subscribe to this channel, kindly click on the sub subscription button and click on the notification bar so that you'll be informed whenever I release a new tutorial. To check the whole playlist, you can check the description below and you have access to the whole playlist on Internet of Things series. So let's get straight in by looking at the hardware connection. Here we have the hardware connection. I have my Node MCU connected to DHC11. For this tutorial, I'll be using a DHC11. So it has four pins. And the connection goes like this. This is pin one. It's connected to three volts. Three volts connect pin one to three volts on the Node MCU and connect a 10 key resistor between pin one and pin two. And from pin 2 connected to D4, that is pin 2, D4 of the Node MCU. And the third pin is not going to be connected, but we are going to connect the fourth pin to ground. So once again, connect pin 1 to 3 volts of the Node MCU. You connect the 10K resistor between pin 1 and pin 2. And from pin 2, connect to D4. We made pin 3. Pin 3, we are not going to use it. And connect pin 4 to the ground of the node MCU. So now I will plug it in and we are going to do the necessary setup on the laptop. After setting up the hardware that is connecting the DHT11 sensor to the ESP8266, the next thing you want to do is to set up IBM Cloud. To set up IBM Cloud, head over straight into the browser and in the search bar you can just type IBM Cloud. So I have this web page displayed and I'm going to click on the first one that says ibmcloud.com slash cloud. So if you're new to IBM Cloud, you can just simply create an account by clicking on create IBM Cloud account. But if you already have an account, maybe you have created an account before this time, just click on login, provide your username and password and you're able to log into IBM Cloud. Here okay, I put in my username, which is my IBM ID, my email address. and then my password. With this, I have successfully logged in into IBM Cloud. So now I'm going to be creating a resource. I'm going to be creating a service, which is Internet of Things service, and I'm going to be configuring it. The service that IBM provides for Internet of Things is called the Watson IoT platform. So I'm going to be searching for Internet of Things from the resource and product that IBM Cloud offers. And I'm going to be setting up Watson IoT to do to use the Watson IoT Studio, you can just come to create resources, create a new resource, check under the list of resources and search for Internet of Things platform. But I don't want to go through all that stress. I've just used the search bar, which I have at the top, and search for Internet of Things. And as you can see, I have Internet of Things platform, which is our Watson IoT platform. So click on Internet of Things platform. And on this page, we have an overview of what the Internet of Things platform is. So we have options to select our location, the type of plan that we want, if it's the free plan or the advanced plan. We have about we have information about the surface. We also have some documentation about the surface. So I'll just stick to the default, which is the free plan. And I'm going to click on license agreement. So after finishing every setup you can change this to a location nearest to you yeah i'm just going to leave it as london so after setting up everything and make sure if you want to use the free platform this on the summary it's showing free so after that click on create and now our internet of things platform has been created we can see that the resource is named internet of things platform zq 
whenever you are creating a new platform, it's going to be changing these last two letters. So to access the Internet of Things platform, we're going to click on Launch, and that's going to open another tab where we have the Watson IoT Studio. If you check the tab name, it's named IBM Watson IoT Platform. So what we need to do here is to sign in into the platform, just like we signed in into IBM Cloud originally. If you scroll down, there are a lot of information about what the platform can offer you and how you can use it, different protocols you can use to connect and different APIs that you can use. So to sign in to Watson IoT Platform, I'm going to click on Sign In. And I'm going to use the exact IBM ID and the password I used to sign into my IBM Cloud. So I use the same email address and the same password. And now I've successfully signed in into Watson IBM platform. So if you check this page, there's so much of information that we need there. So what we need to do is to go to the portal by clicking on our profile there. And we're going to see that a company has been displayed. We have this and say blue mix free. So just click on this and we'll be taken to the IBM Watson IoT platform dashboard. Yes, and now we are in Watson IoT Studio where we can set up our device, set up our device type, set up configurations for IBM Cloud to receive data from our IoT device. So basically, we are going to be doing three things inside Watson IoT platform for it to receive data from my ESP8266. The first thing we have to do is to set up our device type. What is device type? For example, you are running home automation for your house and you have a lot of some, you have some sensors in the kitchen, you have some sensors in the living room, you have some sensors in the toilet. So you can group your device types. So you know that the, all these devices, they are coming from the living room, all these devices, they are coming from the kitchen. So if you head over to device, and come to device types. We're going to see where we can add a device type. So here we are going to give our device type a name. So I'm not going to give it like a toilet or kitchen. I'm just going to give it ESP8266 to show that this device is an ESP8266 device. So make sure it's device not gateway and you can give it a description. You can give it a description, you can just say test So once we are done giving the device type a name, click on next. So on this particular tab, you can leave all this without being filled and you can just fill them with whatever you want to fill them, the serial number, the model, the description, the hardware, fashion. So to save time, I'm just going to click on finish. So as you can see, I've added a new device type called ESP8266. So now I'm going to be adding different devices to my device type. But don't forget, in this particular tutorial, I'm adding only one device, which is my ESP8266. So I just come back to Browse and click on Add Device. You can either click through the top right hand corner or use this. I'm going to use this. So after clicking that, it's asking me to select a device type. If I head over to device type, it's going to show me all the list of device types that I have. For this tutorial, I've already created one. So I'm going to select my device type, which is ESP8266. Then device ID. So device ID is the ID you are assigning to this particular device. I'm, I'm going to call this device one. I'm just choose to call this device one. So this is my first IoT device. So after that, I click on next. So this is the same thing we saw while clicking device type. So I'm just going to leave it as it is without filling in anything. If, if you like, you can just fill it something, something to identify your devices. So here it's asking for authentication token. I want one to create for to be created for me automatically. So I'm I'm not going to fill in anything. I just click on next. And after that, you click on finish. So our device has been successfully created called device one. And under the device credentials, we have a lot of information we need to be able to send data from our device to the cloud. So what you have to do is that copy all this thing and save it because you will not be able to access them once you have leave this page. So I'm just going to copy this and paste it inside my notepad. So with that, you are done creating a device in the IBM 
Watson IoT platform. The third and the last thing we are going to do is to set up security. So to do that, come to the left options and click on security. So under connection security, click on the pencil icon. And here where it's a security level, change it from TLS with authentication token to TLS optional. So this is TLS optional. Okay. Then click on save. And with this, our IBM Cloud is fully ready to receive data from our ESP 8266s. So now head over to Arduino IDE and let's set up the code. And here I am in my Arduino IDE. Before I can successfully send data from my ESP 8266s to IBM Cloud, I'm going to need two libraries. So I'll just head over to Library Manager. We're going to be downloading two libraries. The first one is the pub sub client and the second one is the Arduino JSON library. So I'm just search for pub sub client. So here I have my pub sub client. I already have it, have it installed. If you haven't installed it, just click on install and you'll be good to go. So the second library is the Arduino JSON library. You can search for Arduino JSON. So it's here at the very top and I already have it installed. If you have not installed it, just click on install and with that, we are good to go. And I have the Arduino code to send data from ESP266 to IBM Cloud Day. So at the first part of my code, I'm including all the libraries. I have my e 266s Wi-Fi, my DHT, my Arduino JC, and my PopStop client. While at the seventh line, I'm setting up my MQTT host. So at the beginning part, I have my organization ID. If you go back to what we copied the other time, so I have this organization ID, which is 3XR414. So just put it at the beginning. So this is going to change depending on your organization ID. So leave the port as it is, which is 1883. And also, this is going to be like this. If you start, it's going to be D. This is my organization ID again. This is my device type, and this is my device ID. So I have my device token here. We're going to leave this as it is, and every other thing will be left as they are. So if you can study the code and change it to how you want it to be like and you'll be able to send whichever data you want to IBM Cloud. So I'm going to compile this and upload it. And now my code is done uploading. If I open the serial monitor to monitor the output, so my device, my device has been connected. I have the data coming in the temperature and humidity. So I'll just click on reset so that we can see this from the beginning. So we see Wi-Fi connected and also MQTT connected. And I'm having these strings of data coming in from my ESP 26s and going to IBM Cloud. So now I'm going to open my browser and go back to IBM Cloud. So in IBM Cloud, you can see the device I created, it's saying connected. And if I click on this drop down arrow, and add to recent events. So you can see I have my data coming in from the ESP 266s, I have temperature and also humidity. So now we have successfully sent data from our ESP 266s to IBM Cloud. Now it's better if you have a visualization for our data. So we are going to create a dashboard where we can view our data graphically. So to do that, just come over to boards and when we created our device, two different boards were created for us. One for usage overview and one for risk and security overview. So inside the usage overview, I'm going to be adding my own cards. The three cards are created. The one for data transfer, device type, and also data transferred again. So I'm going to add a new card by clicking on add new card. So since we are monitoring the temperature and humidity, I'm going to be using line charts to monitor my temperature. And here I'm to select which device I want to use, which is this device the one I created. So after that, click on next. So next is to click on connect new data set. So I'm going to put status in the event. And property, I'm going to put temp. So it's asking for device type, the type I'm going to put number. 
we use float, just let's use float, and the unit is degree Celsius. So after that, we click on next. So it's asking for the size. You can just select anything you like here, and I'll click on next. So I'm going to call this my temperature chart. So after that, I'm going to click on submit. So I have my temperature chart here. You can see I have temperature coming in already at this point. So I'm going to create another card for my humidity. So I'm going to use line chart again. Or in this case, just to show us another type, I'm going to be using gauge. So again, I'm going to select this as my device. Click on next. Connect new data set. So the event is status and the property is humidity. So now I'm going to be selecting number and the unit is percentage. So after that, click on next. And since I have this, that is okay by me. I'm going to click on next and I call it my humidity gauge. So that I click on submit. So, as you can see here, if I scroll this up, so the size here is too small. I can just change the size if you like. So, as you can see, I have my temperature and my humidity gauge displayed. So I have my temperature chart, I have my temperature coming in, uh, and I have this to be my humidity gauge. So that's simply how you can send data from ESP266 to IBM Cloud. If you go back here, I have my status, which is my data coming from the ESP266. It's sent in form of JSON. This is temp and this is humidity. So that's basically how you can send data from ESP266 to IBM Cloud. So thank you. If you like this tutorial, don't forget to share, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel for more. So I have a lot of playlists on how to send data from different IoT boards to different cloud platform. In my last tutorial, I look at how to send data from Raspberry Pi to IBM Cloud platform. If you want to check that, you can just go and check that out. The link is in the description below. Also, the code to this code is in the description below. So thank you and I'm going to see you in the next tutorial.